lot about Mike Brown's contract today and the fact that Adrian Wojnarowski reported on Friday, a fun way to start off the weekend, that uh, the Kings and Mike Brown have tabled contract talks for the time being. Uh, there is still a gulf between them on what that contract is going to look like. And one of the first things I thought about with this was if you're Malik Monk and you're thinking about re-signing with Sacramento, which I I, I think is, is uh, I mean, minimum 50-50 type of thing that he's going to do. Um, this can't help. I don't know how much it, I don't know how much it hurts. I don't know if he's like, Hey, if Mike Brown isn't signed long-term, I'm not signing long-term. I don't, I, I have no idea what level of dedication he has to Mike Brown specifically as the coach. Um, but I definitely don't think it's helpful. If, if you're a player like Malik Monk, who's getting four years and a hundred million from the magic and then something that amounts eventually to four years and a hundred million. We're not going to go into the machinations of how the Kings could make that work, but um, you're also getting that from Sacramento and you kind of look at what Jamal Mosley and the magic did this year. And you're looking at the Kings who can't decide who their coach is going to be for the next two years. Mm -hmm. I don't think that helps. No, I I mean, I think that that's a a problem, right? I I do as a, as a free agent, you want to know exactly where you're going to be. Now I, I'll also point out that like in his exit interview, Malik was very clear, like that Mike didn't make him a a better NBA player, that he gave him an opportunity and that that Malik took advantage of that opportunity. He was very distinct to like kind of create that, that idea that it's something different, but I I think it plays into a larger picture, right? So if we're going to, let's just say that, that Malik gets a, a two year contract, right? Uh, Well, let's say, let's say Malik gets a four year contract, but after year two, there's an opt out. So he's going to get 17.4 and then 18.5 or whatever. He's going to get like right around a two year 36, but it'll look more like a a four year 78 on paper. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be that opt out, right? What would make you think if you're Malik that any promises that that the Kings like quietly could make to you that, hey, look, what we're going to do here is we're going to give you a two year deal, but you opt out after year two, then we'll have full Larry Bird rights and we'll give you a much larger contract. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll we'll discuss a neighborhood of this amount of money. Sure. What would make you you feel the confidence that the team is going to hold up that their end of the, the bargain there? Because zero, zero, and, and not huh. only that, but like a lot changes in two years. Yeah, a lot changes in two years. If we're talking about one year of Mike Brown, and then you're starting over the new coach in year two, what does Malik like? What does his value look like at the end of year two? Right, and what does new coach d- want to do with Malik Monk specifically? Yeah, what if you lose value in your second year with the Kings? Right, because the Kings. Uh, trust this is not a king's thing this is just an any team in any sport thing. yeah if they said yeah hey we'll talk about a contract uh north of 30 million a year after after two years Mm -hmm. and then monk goes out and has a fine year this year but then next year under a new coach averages six points and two assists a game or 11 points or you know sure even that if his numbers dip precipitously yes the kings are going yeah okay hey let's talk 35 they're going oh actually Oh, wait. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I can. Yeah, we're not quite sure. And, you know, you didn't really get along with the new guy yeah. all that well. And, and again, that's not, I don't want to put that on the Kings. That's what any team would do. No, but I, I mean, that's that's the, the situation, though. Right. That's, that's where, the door they're opening up. Yeah, because when we talk about, oh, there, it's just a clear path that, you know, the Kings are going to continue to get better each and every year. We don't know that that's going to be the case. They mm-hmm. They just literally lost two more games than they did the year before. We don't know if it's a downward trend, if it's an upward trend. All I know is what I don't want to see is the confusion over this in the middle of a season where coaches start coaching for their lives, start playing guys that, you know, we get to January and you're coaching for your life and you're in Sacramento and you're like, all right, forget this. Let's start playing guys 38 to 30 to 42 minutes a game. Yeah. And let's try to go for every single win, every which you should anyways try for every win. Mm-hmm. But opportunities shrink for other players. Things change. Like that's why you don't do this because it it's not a motivational tool. Mike Brown has been in the league for thirty years. You're not going to use a oh, you got to prove it to me. 
That's, uh, Mike Mike's already proven what he needs to prove. Bro, that's the other thing that that I can't I can't shake with this is I think there's a lot of coaches who would go, "Hey, there's 30 jobs. I have one. And I will do whatever it takes to keep this gig." Mhm. The, I think there are a handful of coaches in the league. I don't I don't know off the top of my head which ones, but I think Mike Brown is one of them because, like you said, he's been around for three freaking decades. He's been to finals. He's taken teams to playoffs. He's turned this team around. He's got four rings as an assistant. He is chilling. I think he is one of very few coaches in the league that are like, but it'll come back around. Like, I don't... I'm not going to kowtow to whatever... whatever contract demands you're putting on the table because i need to keep my one head coaching job like there will be opportunities oh yeah i he'll, mean he'll, he'll be, be an in, assistant for the in the league if he wants that he might not get another head coaching job like right off the bat maybe he will because uh, the sure. performance he just did in sacramento mm-hmm. where he turned around a franchise that had, hasn't been good for 16 years yeah like there's a possibility he get another opportunity right away but there's also a possibility that he could go on to be an assistant for another 15 years in the league oh, and easy and just be like, okay, this is, this is fine. And it, his name. And, and like you said, maybe not next year or the year after he doesn't, but his name would be in every head coaching search. Yeah. Every single, remember how Jordy Fernandez, every time a team had a head coach opening, he was on the short list. Oh yeah. Like that would be Mike Brown. It's just that that's why he was on the Kings list. Yeah. A good freaking coach. And I think he knows that. So that I, I, I could super be wrong. I don't know the guy. But I could, I, I, I feel like the vibe for me is I wouldn't be shocked if he was like, hey, you want to do five a year? Like, all right, see ya. I'll, yeah. But goodbye. I, like, <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, the Kings aren't around that range from what I know. Like, they're higher than that. Uh, it's not like they're being sure, disrespectful sure. at this point. Yeah, I pick I picked a common yeah. low number. I think the the problem is a combination of years and and dollar. And, mm-hmm. and also like, I, I think we got in this discussion while you were, um, while we were on, on break, uh, Meg in the chat had brought up that, you know, like if Mike's looking for like 12 to 13, you know, and, and Buttonholzer just got 50, you know, maybe he's looking for more. And, and from what I know, that's not the case that there's not some like giant, like margin here of craziness that Mike's asking for something over the moon. He's not asking for the two year 35 that that Steve Kerr got. He's not asking for Popovich money or or the eight year one hundred and twenty million dollar deal that Spolster signed. He's not asking for that from what from sort of like the what I've been hearing around the team. But what he is doing is he's trying to solidify like everybody else is at this point this this marker around the ten million dollar a year range that coaches of his ilk deserve. Yep. that they've been underpaid for many, many years. All of a sudden, the television deal is about to kick in. All of these things are happening. The franchise valuations are skyrocketing, but NBA head coaches don't aren't going to get the bump. No, they're getting the bump right now. It's uh, happening. And it's a bump that should have happened years ago, but it's on guys like Mike and on Mike Budden, uh, Budenholzer to like secure that a really good coach in the NBA, a guy with a 607 career win percentage, should get around $10 million a year. And younger coaches coming in, maybe they get six, maybe they get seven. But the great coaches, maybe they get 17, maybe they get 20. Mm-hmm. That's it, It's sort of on you as a coach to solidify what that means at this point. And it's why star-level players don't take less than what they, what they can possibly get, the maximum they can possibly get. They don't want to set a standard that, that star-level players should take way less so then the next star-level player that gets up there he feels like he has to take less so you can build the team. Like, no, like you, you shouldn't, you should be able to get what, what yes. you're deserved. And, yes. you know, again, it goes down to the, if you have a, if you have a $5 million house, at mm-hmm. least you think it's worth 5 million and no one will offer you more than 2 million. I hate to tell you, you have a $2 million house, Yes, right? You have to set a standard though. If you're, if these players and coaches that like, no, no, the housing prices here, they moved up. Mm-hmm. We're now looking like everyone here is got at, at you know the minimum is right it's a 10 million dollar right. house the maximum is a 17 million dollar house the low end is yeah. a, is a three million dollar house oh i mean a, a seven million dollar house we don't really let anyone else in the neighborhood for for, for under that mm. yeah i i'm this comes down to this and then we can move on yeah for me extend him or move on 
Mm. You're either so, you're either sold at this point or you're not. Yeah. That, I, that's that's it. One more year going to dramatically change your mind? I, you're you're happy with the progress or you're or you're not? So, anyways, we'll continue discussing this whenever it.